everybody. It's Michelle and today we're making a card. This is going to be a congratulations card. I thought of this idea a little bit later after making the traffic light table setting and I thought what fun it would be to make a congratulations card to look just like that for someone who has just gotten their license or maybe for their sweet 16. So I created a card base here that is four inches by seven inches and that's a little bit odd of a size and you could use an envelope for this from a five by seven card or you could create a custom one to fit it using your scoreboard or your envelope punch board so first of all I cut this at eight inches by seven inches and then just folded that right in half to create the four by seven and then I cut a white piece to go inside so that we can write our sentiment. And I cut that at three and three quarters by six and three quarters. And I'm going to use my tag shaped die. And this is the largest one out of my stacking unbranded tag set. And I'm just going to use that just to hold it up to the edge as a template to go by and cut those corners off. It doesn't cut much of a corner, but I just want a little bit. Just to kind of give us the feel of that shape. Cutting those corners off just makes it feel a little bit more like a traffic light instead of just a square card. I love this about dies. You don't always have to run them through your die cutting machine. You can use them as templates and stencils. And I think they are very versatile. You can get a lot of use out of these dies. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the piece that goes inside. And just slide it right over to the other corner. Flip it around. Well, if I can get it to stay straight. Go ahead, set my die aside and adhere that to the inside. And that's going to be the perfect border around that. And I'm just using art glitter glue. Just use whichever adhesive you prefer. And I think those corners being cut off helps give it a fun shape. I think that is really cute. And I'm going to put congrats inside. And this is just from those Miss Sparkle and Company stamp sets that I got at Joann a while back. And I will tell you this, I don't think that they're made of photopolymer like the good stamps. They are a little squishy so if you press down very hard it will kind of smush and you'll get a blurred image. So I try to stamp very carefully with these. Actually I think I'll get my Misty and use that. That way I can press very lightly but if I need to re-stamp, I can get my positioning perfect. I've been meaning to do a video on the Misty for you guys. I know a lot of you have asked about it. 
and I will get around to doing that hopefully soon. So I'm just folding this backwards and I can place it in there. And with the Misty, let me turn this around, I've got it backwards. With the Misty, it's easy because you can magnet your card in place and I just folded my flap backwards. Let's see. This is how it's going to open, so I want it to be upright this way. And then I can scoot that completely into the corner so that I can make sure that I get that in the right place every single time. And I can get my stamping the same. And then I'm going to place my congrats where I want that to be. And then I just close the door on the Misty and that will stick to that stamp and pick it right up just like my acrylic block would do. And what I like about this, especially with these stamps that um, you can't press hard with because they do kind of need re-stamping because if you do it so lightly as to not smush it, then you're likely to get a very light image and the Misty will allow me to re-stamp that so I can do multiple stamps until I get it dark enough and it'll be in the same positioning every time because I know that I have pulled that down into the corner in the exact position and I can just ink up my stamp and then I can press lightly because I don't want to make a blurry image but as you see it doesn't stamp completely every time so I can ink that up again making sure that I pull it down to the corner to the exact placement that it's been and stamp again and that still is not quite as dark and solid as I want it to be and with the Misty I can stamp as many times as I need to and I know that it's always the same positioning as long as I haven't moved my stamps or anything and I'm happy with that. So I will try to do a more extensive video a little later on about the Misty, but it's a really great tool. Okay, so now to work on the front of our card, I'm just going to make my traffic lights on the front and I just cut those out of the adhesive backed glitter paper from Dollar Tree and I did that using my dies. Let's see if I can measure about how big these ended up being. So those are right at two inches. So if you don't have the dies you could use a two inch circle punch. And with that adhesive back, I can just peel those right off. Again, it's not super sticky, so I am going to add a little bit of art glitter glue just to be sure. And I'm going to line this up on my grid mat so that I can get a good idea of where is center? And then just press it down. And with that one centered up, I can judge a little more easily how to place the top and bottom ones.
And I really love the sparkle of those traffic lights using that glitter paper. I think that is just adorable. And I think I want to make one more small change, and that is just to add some stitching around that. And I'm using my Uniball Gel Impact Pen in silver. And I'm just going to go around and add some stitching around the border. And I think that finished it off nicely. I almost want to add a sentiment banner or something across the middle, but I really don't want to distract from the traffic light look. So I think I'll leave it at that and leave the sentiment only on the inside. So that completes my card, and I think any new driver would love to get this. leave a comment below and let me know what you think of my traffic light card. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a like over on my Facebook page and be sure to join our Facebook group Crafty Minds. Also follow me on Pinterest and Instagram and don't forget to visit my blog. I'll put the links to all of those in the description below so be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.